We're going to keep going with this because we have retired Army Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. He's also a Fox News contributor. He can give us his thoughts and tell us where we are right or wrong. But mostly I'm sure we're right, as you will say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. I'm not going to go where Greg was at, though. <laughs> Look, here's one of the things, that, the reason why you want to get to a, a level of deterrence. And the deterrence is based on credibility of what you're doing. And I know it feels good to bomb 85 targets, but thousands of pounds of munitions on it, and you rip your shirt off and pound your chest. But if you don't establish deterrence with credibility, it's just going to continue. And my concern is that we haven't really gone to the root cause, and the root cause is Iran. And that's where you have to go. You have to go downtown to establish that. And why is that important? Because when you look at the Middle East, I'm, not, I'm looking at the Middle East when they, people have talked, well, it's the most dangerous it's been since 1973. No, I think the world's approaching the most dangerous state since 1938, when the British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain went to Munich, and he came out of Munich after talking to Hitler, and he said, oh, peace in our time. Then you started a world war. Wars generally start by big mistakes, and this is getting to be a big mistake area. You're looking at Iran that is getting ready to go nuclear. They're already enriching almost at 90 percent of, of uranium, and when you get to 90 percent, you can create an, a nuclear weapon, and if they get that, it to totally destabilizes the Middle East. You, you react differently to a nuclear power than to a non-nuclear power. You see all the destabilization there, and we, we're not forcing ourselves and forcing the rest of the world to understand this has gone about as far as we want it to go. Stabilize the region, and, and we're not going there. And so we're letting the Chinese get involved. Chinese make a, a, a deal, a peace deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, that would have never happened previously. And you look at what's happening in Ukraine, in Russia, in the Far East with China, and this all impacts. And, and I think what we're doing right now is we're feeling good, we're bombing a lot of sand and a lot of asphalt, but we're not going after the root cause. And I hate to say it, but we haven't gone into Iran, and I know that if you do that, the risk goes up. I've got that. But you've got to get uncomfortable when you do something like that to make the other side uncomfortable. Iran does not want to go to war with the United States of America. They are afraid of the United States. They know what we can do, and we should make them understand that we are going to take a step that is going to prevent you from doing anything further. That means take out their, their economic facilities, like their oil fields. That means taking out their leadership, either, either Ismail Ghani, the leader of the Quds Force. You're talking about Khamenei, the supreme leader. You're talking about taking out all the, the, their uh, military facilities. You've got to be willing to go there. And when the other side realizes that you're willing to step up and go there, they're going to back down. Right now, we have not sent that message at all. And I don't think this campaign has a good end state to it right now. Judge. You know, uh, there, there's no question, General, that we, I believe, have the military ability and capacity to be able to have a war with Iran. I'm not promoting it. I, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in World War III. But to continue to say we don't want a conflict with Iran, if they don't want a conflict with us, and if that is your opinion, why are we so afraid to at least threaten them? to at least take out some infrastructure, to at least take out some of the oil fields. Why are we so afraid? Well, it's we've got the capacity and capability. That, that's without question. It all comes to, down to leadership. And there's the commander in chief, Article 2, Section 2, there's the president. And it's his decision making as his advisors as well. And I really think they're risk averse. You know, the, what your adversaries do, they read your leadership. They do that. We do that as well. We say, OK, we know this leader is probably going to react this way. This leader is going to react that way. And they look at somebody like a President Biden, who has traditionally been risk averse. We all set patterns. You set patterns. I set patterns. You go to the same service station. You go to the same grocery store. You set those patterns as leadership as well. And they see a leader who is very risk averse and doesn't want to go there. So they're going to push the envelope. You've got to break that. You've got to break away from that. That's the only way you reach a conclusion. There's nothing to do with capacity. we got plenty of that. And I think the Iranians have said, I think we can push this guy. And that's exactly what we're doing. I understand that's a harsh assessment. I know that. But I think it's true. Well, if I heard you correctly, what I heard you describe is something akin to what Lindsey Graham might have tweeted the other day when he said bomb Tehran. You might have not targeted Tehran, but you talked about oil fields. You talked about a direct hit on Iran. And you suggested that any type of hit like that would back Iran down from this aggressive stance. I'm just curious. What would be your historical precedent? If you're selling that to the American people, that we are going to take an aggressive action against some nation state and they will back down, and this will not metastasize into a greater war, 
Can you give me that when that happened in American history that was a great success? Oh, sure. I can give you a lot of them. I'll yeah. start with the Civil War. When Grant Martin sent War Sherman down success? to the sea, and they burned Atlanta. You come, you keep coming towards this, towards this way. When the United States of America sent a clear message in World War II, when we firebombed Dresden into the ground, when right. we bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima with an atomic weapon instead of invading, those things happen all but the time. But what I'm curious about, you General, just I'm sorry to interrupt. What I'm curious about the two examples you gave us of the Civil War and World War II were clearly wide, uh, worldwide metastasized actions that resulted in millions of death. I thought you were describing an aggressive attack in Iran to no. avoid a greater war. I'll, I'll give you one simple example. It happened during the administration with President Trump when we killed Soleimani. Very clear. Yep. We killed Soleimani and things quieted down. We took out one <clears throat> key leader. I'll give you another good example. When we, when we were having peace discussions with the Taliban and President Trump, and I was in the Oval Office when we talked to Mueller Baradar, who is a leader of the Taliban. It was translated, and I sat there wondering, boy, how is this being translated? But we <laughs> said very clearly what we were going to do to him and the Taliban if something happened. And after that discussion, not a single American was killed in over a year in Afghanistan. You send a certain message to certain people, they receive the message because they believe you're serious. So I can give you, I, we can spend an hour if you want to. Well, I can give you a historical example <laughs> from do, historical example. Hour? from the Third Punic War to currently, where it goes, what you do with leadership. But it makes a hard decision to do it. But you've got to make that call sometimes. That doesn't mean you totally bomb Iran, but you are very selective in your targeting, and so, it needs to be done. Uh, so, General, thanks for joining us. So I guess my question to, to sort of pick up where, where Will left off is this idea that if we decide that we're going to preemptively strike in Iran, Right? Are, are, are you saying that we do not, you do not believe that the Iranians would retaliate in some sort of way, given the fact that we have a lot of troops in that region? And I, I think we said earlier in the show, many of them are in, they're in, in, in bases that we, we already lost three there, we've 40 injured. Are we saying that there's, not, there's no potential for the Iranians to strike back and hurt American troops on the ground there? Of course there is, Richard. But, but I'll, I'll take issue with one word you used. For us to preemptively attack Iran, They've been attacking us for the last 90 days. Could you be very clear? They've been striking at all our facilities. The their secure forces. <laughs> and, we, and we would go after them. Of course we would have to accept that. That's the risk level, not a gamble. But there's a risk level you take. But you make sure they understand. If you want to dance with the bear, the United States being the bear, we will decide when the dance stops, not you. And you make that hard call. Look, I'm not big on starting a war. I've had kids in the military, I've been in the military, but I also understand what you have to do to establish some level of deterrence in the world and in the region. And we're not there yet. And you have to establish that. If not, you're heading for a larger war, more conflict, more death, more Americans have been lost. We've been dodging a bullet for the last 90 days. It finally hit home with the deaths of three great Americans, and that could continue into the future. This thing has not stopped, not at all. And I would like to know what is the end state of this contingency plan that the United States has established with all this bombing. I don't know where they're going to. They need to tell us. Well, they called a lid, so I don't think we're going to get that tonight. Thank you, General <laughs> Kellogg. Let's bring... Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.